uh, we have a new whiteboard series. Okay, so we're when you're scrolling through the videos and you see Walker in green pants and a green jacket, all of these videos are tied together in the exact same series. Okay, in this video series, we're basically going to be covering three topics. Okay, topic number one is what is OPC? We haven't done this in a couple of years. It's gonna, we're going to do a 10,000 foot view of what is OPC. We're going to talk about the OPC Foundation. We're going to talk about the history of OPC over the last 20 to 30 years and kind of where did we get to and you know, what does it mean for industry? Okay, where are we and what does it mean for industry? Number two, we're going to do what is MQTT? Okay, we did, we did that a few years ago. We're gonna do it again. It's gonna be an updated version of MQTT. I'm actually gonna talk about MQTT 311. I'm gonna talk about MQTT 5, and I'm gonna talk about Spark Plug B and how they all work together for industry. Okay, then we're gonna do OPC UA specifically versus MQTT use cases. That is, where is it appropriate for an industry 4.0 implementation to use OPC UA? What, what are the strengths of OPC UA? In what applications you wanna use OPC UA? And then in what applications do you want to use MQTT? And when do you specifically want to use MQTT with Sparkplug B? And how do they interoperate with one another? We're going to shoot a video after that where I'm going to do a screen share and I'm actually going to do some benchmarking between the two on screen. So I'm going to show you what it's like with raw code to connect to a broker, set up subscriptions, update that broker with other clients and view the changes self-aware. And then we're gonna do the same thing using an OPC client connecting to an OPC server using the UA standard, and we'll, we'll compare and contrast the two, all right? And then the last thing that we're gonna to touch on is we're gonna talk about, MQ, we use MQTT and Sparkplug B to replace many of the use cases that are, we use it in place of many of the use cases where people used to use native communications protocols, field bus, or OPC, okay? We also replace enterprise data buses using MQTT brokers. I've got Zach and Vaughn in the office with me. This is only the second time in the last year and a half because of the pandemic that we've been able to shoot content live. So we have a brand new whiteboard series. That whiteboard series is we're gonna re revisit some old topics. Here's the reason we're revisiting those old topics because we're getting those same questions all over again. We have a whole new batch of people who have joined the community and they're asking questions that we've answered a couple of years ago and we wanna give updated answers. For example, especially with MQTT, with MQTT 5 coming out and some additional companion specs that were added to OPC UA, we wanna go ahead and give an updated definition, okay? So with that, let's get started. Kicking ass, taking names, holla! Last but not least, who can we thank for making this series possible? All right, that's a great question. So the sponsor of this video series is EMQX. So EMQ is an enterprise class broker. There are basically two brokers in the market that we use the most that we believe are absolute best in class. EMQX is one of those brokers. They are one of the sponsors of the community. And so this whole video series is sponsored by EMQX. We're gonna be shooting a one hour podcast with those guys. We're gonna be asking them some hard hitting questions and we're gonna lob in some, some softballs there to get them warmed up. Then we're gonna ask them some hard hitting questions. We're gonna be demonstrating the product. We're gonna show you how we use EMQX in our architectures. Then we're gonna introduce the world to EMQX. I wanna talk a little bit about sponsorships. If you guys are in the community, you guys have been seeing that lately we've accepted, we've allowed companies to sponsor the channel. Okay, here's why. So companies like PLC Next, companies like PLC Next, Easy VPN, Canary Labs, EMQX, talking to HiveMQ, etc. A couple of rules on sponsorships, okay? The reason we've decided to accept sponsorships is so that we can produce more content for the community. We're not busy having to go out and make money so that we can fund the production of the content because it's incredibly expensive to do this stuff. So the, the sponsors, these are companies we already talk about all the time. They came to us and said, hey, we are willing to support the community. Let's put something together to do this. So we are only allowing companies who we believe in their products and we actually use them. Those companies have to allow us to give our unfettered opinion of the product, good, bad, ugly. So there can be no constraints on what we say about their products. There's no exclusivity agreements. So if company who makes product A in vertical A is one of the core, one of the sponsors of the channel for a month, that doesn't mean that we're not allowed to mention company B in in vertical A, okay? There are no constraints on what we say, who we talk about, or what our opinions are. And last but not least, 
their focus has to be on benefiting the community. Okay, they have to share our values. And so we're very, very stringent about who we're going to be allowing to sponsor the channel. And when they do sponsor the channel, the entire community is going to know who is paying, who sponsored those videos, or who sponsored that channel for that month. Okay, so when, when there is a sponsorship, you will know absolutely clearly. When we are doing a commercial, if you will, a 15 second spot to just talk about them, you are going to know flat out that that is a advertisement, it is a sponsorship, and the rest of it is us just talking the way we always talk, all right? So with that, let's get started with the, board, the whiteboard series. All right, let me do this. A huge thank you to EMQX, the enterprise broker, for sponsoring this video.